Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time on board, you should definitely hit subscribe before you go any further and realise how fucking garbage this content is. If it's not your first time on the channel and the fact that you're here to watch this video in particular means that you definitely have some problems up here that you should take a look into. But thank you very much for coming along guys. Let me apologise in advance if there are any weird noises in the background. The horses are out the back there uh, that live next door. Not my horses. I don't have anything majestic like that. I have a pug and he's about a smooth brain as they come. He also likes to make noises, but they're a bit more kind of obvious. It sounds a lot like snoring. But either way, you're not here to talk about animals. You're here to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! And although you're here for one of the smoothest brain videos in the world, I'm sure you'll fit right in. I like to think that everyone hates this deck for a reason. If they hate it, it's because it's doing something right, even if it's because it's so wrong that it's right. If you are watching this video and you're inspired to pick up the singles afterwards or during, I don't really care or mind which way round you do it, you should go ahead and check out the link in the description to the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cars UK, and I'll be able to hook you up with a nice discount using that link on their eBay store. But again, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck right in to the video. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, in all its absolutely fucking reprehensible glory, Guru Numeron. So I'm just going to do some rearranging here because I don't know how the fuck I put it all in this order, but we'll we'll get to that in a moment. Ah, why is it moving so much? Fuck you. Right, anyway, let's try that again, shall we? So we've got triple copies of Guru here. This deck is just fucking Guru. That's what it is. No one cares about the rest of the subterra stuff. We are just here for fucking Guru. This card is so important in the deck. You're going to keep resolving it. It's going to allow you to do all kinds of flippy floppy shit, which pisses everyone off, but allows you to get some free wins, especially against opponents you just put on tilt who don't really want to have to deal with it. If you want some additional reason behind some of these cards, particularly when I was fresh off playing this myself, there will be a link on the screen to the video on Jamie the Kid's channel from a couple of formats ago or so, which will go into a little bit more detail about what I'm playing and why I'm playing it. But for the rest of it, you'll hear in this video. So again, triple copies of Guru, I think it's pretty mandatory. Triple copies of Fiendes for the same sort of thing. This is your free negate. This card pisses people off so much. I fucking love it. We have a single copy of Archer for being able to get rid of those cards that we've booked down nice and free and allow us to push to clear up the opponent's board. Triple copy is a wall because it's another way to get into the field spell, which is going to get us some free wins. What's not to like about that? It does also double up as the fact that it can help protect your life points if you find yourself lacking a little bit, which can sometimes come up with this deck. And as for hand traps for running triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, you can run a lot more in here if you can find the room for it. I quite think it's kind of tight at the moment at 42 cards. I don't really have a lot of room for that. You could omit the uh, the fucking floodgate at the end for another place set of hand traps, but I think that this deck really just sort of runs on the ability to be able to uh, just not give a fuck about your opponent and just do whatever it wants to do. But again, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring gets the most diverse of the hand traps that there is, so I think as a three of it's pretty mandatory. We have a single copy of Terraforming in here. We run field spells, so again, there's no reason not to play. In fact, we run loads of field spells, so there's no reason not to play it. Two copies of Calling. I think three is just absolutely unnecessary and bricky. Two is perfectly fine. Triple copies of Memories of Hope. Being able to draw four fucking cards on turn one is just absolutely ridiculous. If you resolve it, normally your opponent's actually going to scoop after that because you're just going to set like a billion cards and then they just they realize that the jig is up already. So just fucking give up. A single copy of Call by the Grave, whilst it's at one, we need to make use of it. It is a power spell, much like the likes of Rota, Foolish Barrel, all that kind of stuff. If your deck needs a card like this, you need to fucking play it. There's no excuses. Even as a one-off, really important. A single copy of Set Rotation, because you can put any of these cards onto the field, lock your opponent out from accessing their own field spells. Um, the only downside with this is that it can get a little bit cloggy in terms of it can stop you going down the engines that you want to go down, particularly if you can't get rid of the field spell on their side. Um, it can lock you out of being able to access other stuff, so you've got to be very careful, but quite often you're going to use this when you're in a position where you know that if you use it, you're going to go ahead and win the duel anyway. Triple copies of Hidden City, because again, it's incredibly important in the deck, uh, really difficult to to sort of benefit from how the deck works if this is off the field. If your opponent gets rid of it, you can be in a sticky situation. So again, having triple copies of this is really nice. We have triple copies of Network. Again, it just allows you to go into those really cool plays. And then we have a single copy of Mystic Mine. Fuck everyone. 
Fuck everyone. You're already playing this reprehensible deck. Why not just play Mystic Mana as well? You get free wins. Honestly, like, people don't main ways to out this card. What the fuck is wrong with people? Like, it's still in the game. It's not been hit. You can cry about it. It's still here. I want free wins. I'm going to use Mystic Mine. Triple copies of Forbidden Droplet again because you want more ways to interrupt and piss your opponent off. Again, just a really nice card to have access to. You can omit it again for more hand traps if you don't have access to it. For the most part, this deck is relatively budget friendly actually if you take out cards like this. So, something to consider. Infinite Impermanence because again, it's probably the second best hand trap I'd argue after Ash Blossom. Certainly the second most diverse in that it can help switch off back row, which in a deck where you're already setting a lot of stuff, it can be tricky for your opponent to try and play around that. A lot of people will also just automatically play stuff in the middle zone because they're fucking idiots. Um, and then that gets you a free negate in that respect. But then also if you're forced to go second and this deck doesn't really like it too much, although it can play that way a little bit more. Um, you want to be able to switch off your opponent's monster effects and this allows you to do just that. Two copies of Final Battle, I think two is plenty. Your opponent isn't normally going to be able to deal with both of them. Um, normally you're not going to poach this. If they're going to hit anything, they're going to hit the field spells because you have so many powerful field spells in play. They're going to be targeting other stuff and usually this gets neglected. And when it does, that's normally how you're going to generate your resources and start to push for game. We are running triple copies of There Can Be Only One because it's incredibly free against certain decks. Again, there's definitely an argument that you could opt not to use this and play something else instead because it's not as powerful as it normally is. But for the most part, for most decks, this is going to help deal with them, certainly to a good degree. And triple copies of Solemn Judgment. Every time I ever flip this card, it just feels better and better and better. Half your life points, don't care. You can't die by paying half your life points. It's impossible. It's impossible. Look it up. Seriously, look it up. Solemn Judgment for the longest time was banned at one, all of those things, whatever the fuck it was over time. This card is absolutely insane. Playing it as a three, I've seen it in your turn one, you're in a really good position. Now, as always with these profiles, we are omitting the side deck. There's no point putting it in there because, well, we don't know where you're playing. Quite frankly, that's what it boils down to. You should set up your side deck according to what you intend to play against. There is a quick note here, though. We have got some super poly targets here because usually I would recommend playing super poly in the side. So keep that in mind. That is why we've got some of the options that we have here. So we start off with our Numeron cards. We're playing two of each because we want to be able to resolve them multiple times. We've got a couple of different options that we can go into. But again, this is going to allow you to go into Zexal. It's going to allow you to go into uh, Avramax. It's going to allow you to go into Mega Claps. Uh, it's going to make you go into all of that good stuff. And that pretty much rounds off the extra deck already. We've got the Chaos Gate here for different options. This is going to help clear up tricky boards. There are some decks that can't deal with this card. So this is the route to go. Otherwise, you're going to be doing smacking for game. Nice and nice and quick. Otherwise, you're locking them out of that, and then you go into one of these two as your final summon for the turn. As a quick note, there is one really cool thing that you need to know about this deck, that the restriction of the additional, uh, like you can only do so many normal summons, doesn't really matter too much to this deck, because you, you resolve this here, you, do, you put these out, again, look it up, the combo is really basic, but setting your guru doesn't count towards that total. So if you need to set Guru, don't worry about it. You can go into these guys, you can go into this, and then you can still set your Guru and go about your sub terra plays like normal. It's pretty cool. And again, our final note here is that we just have these two as super poly targets because I would highly recommend playing them in your extra deck and then having super polys in the side. And that is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've hit subscribe because you've enjoyed the video or at least hated it enough so much that you couldn't possibly look away. I do appreciate you coming along though. If you did enjoy the video, I would like to hear down in the comments exactly what you enjoyed. Maybe you're playing this deck and you have some different ideas on how you'd like to play it and things that you'd prefer as an option to go ahead with. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. In either case, thank you very much for coming along. Again, hopefully you did enjoy it enough to have hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.